Hello everyone, it's Helen at Journaling Planet and today I'm going to be working in my seasonal scrapbook in the autumn section. I've created a playlist for this seasonal scrapbook so if you're wondering how I put it together you can click on the link below and it will take you to a video that shows you how I altered a notebook and created this lovely scrapbook to celebrate the seasons. Right now on the screen I'm just putting together a pile of ephemera that I might put into today's spread. I don't end up using a great deal of it, but I just always like a healthy pile to pull from. I like to sort of think I've got variations and options on things that I'm not sort of stuck with a particular palette or a particular kind of idea. But then again, autumn does tend to draw to mind things like oranges, reds, browns, yellows. So, so far in this book, I have largely been working with that kind of palette and that theme. Uh, but I'm going to branch out a little bit in some future spreads. And what's interesting about working in this book is that I'm getting to use up so much of the ephemera that's been lying around in my stash. Everything from book pages to old calendars. And at the back there, with the numbers on it in green, you can see a piece of uh, kind of old test paper from schools. It is not from when I went to school, in case you're wondering. It has not been in my stash that long. My goodness, that would be a little bit of a problem. But I um, did find it in a kind of uh, paper shop that sold vintage, you know, vintage papers and stationery and things. I remember picking it up and thinking, oh, I'll definitely do something with this. Well, that was about a year ago and it sat in the stash. So I thought about autumn and the fact that it's the time when everyone's kind of going back to school, those who go to school. So I thought it was appropriate to uh, add it into this spread. The leaves that I'm cutting out at the moment out of the foil, that is a upcycled piece of chocolate foil. I do like my chocolate, which comes in very handy for this craft because chocolate boxes and chocolate foils are often very good crafting materials. A lot of the other things that I'm putting in this spread, um, we've got a little bit of craft paper and the orangey green kind of muddy paper that's got kind of leaf prints across it. And that is from my gel plate and I put some leaves on the gel plate and just went to town with some autumn colours. And again, I've used a bit of that paper, but I feel like otherwise it's going to sit there. So I, I decided to start tearing it into it and add it to this spread. The wording, that's a quote from a poem, uh, that's from a book page. Now, one thing I do struggle with, with this scrapbook, and I think it's a common thing when you do collage, is that once you've positioned everything, you sort of have to move it to glue it down properly. And so this time I tried kind of very loosely gluing anything that was glued to the top um, page, sort of the, the, the old calendar that's sitting on top of that beautiful tree. Anything that was sitting on that, I kind of loosely glued it to the top, uh, just very loosely with a bit of glue stick. I wanted to be able to pull it up if I needed to adjust it. And that helped in that instance uh, to make sure that everything kind of stayed in place. There was still some manoeuvring required once I got everything glued down. As you'll see, I didn't quite line everything up as it originally was. I, I mean, I marvel at people who have that skill set. That's amazing. I mean, I just I just struggle with that. Um, but, you know, I knew that these particular pieces of text were going to be in place and that's where they were going to sit. So I did glue them down properly, but everything else was kind of very loosely glued to the top sheet. And then I started gluing down the things that were sitting at the bottom of the stack, sort of against the page. And this process, this kind of technique of loosely gluing things to the thing that's sitting on top worked well for me this time. I'll probably use it again. It's not so bad when you're not filming because you can just take a photo, but obviously this time I was using my phone to film, so I couldn't take a photo. And thus I had to work largely from memory. But you know what? It's okay. It's all part of the process and it's kind of fun as well. Um, so I'm looking at that tree book page that I'm just gluing down now. I mean, that must have been in my stash for about two years, maybe even slightly longer. So I do recommend these seasonal glue books as a way of using up things that are sitting in your stash. Also, I have to say the end product is always lovely. It really is uh, something that, to me, evokes my admiration for the seasons and the way they turn around us. And having done this scrapbook, I am thinking of just making other scrapbooks that I know people would say it's just a glue book, but I do a little bit of writing in it. And I think what might happen this year is that I'll get all of the spreads down as they are. And then next year 
I won't create a new seasonal scrapbook. I'll go in and I'll add yet more scraps and layers to it. So it becomes a little bit less of a kind of glue book layout and more of a um, layered scrapbook. So that is the sort of ultimate goal. This year, I think it will just be a matter of getting these spreads down. And I will do a full flip through of all the spreads once I finish the autumn section. I have done some work off camera, so there is some stuff that you haven't seen. And I'll just talk through some of the lessons that I learned and, you know, how I think I'll work with this project going forward. So ultimately, my goal is for it to be a much more layered scrapbook than it is at the moment. Right now, I can totally understand that some people would think, you know, OK, maybe it's a glue book rather than a scrapbook. Um, but I think over time, over the years, that will change. And I think maybe my goal is maybe once every three years to create a new scrapbook. So really laying it up over the course of three years, three autumns worth of ephemera. And I'm just hoping, you know, things with flips and tip-ins, I'll be able to make it really chunky and very much, as I say, more of a scrapbook style than a glue book. I'm starting to add some brown tape to the straight edges. I do this a lot when I'm working with this kind of layout where there's a lot of uh, straight edges from things that I've cut. I don't always like how harsh that edge is. So I go in with some ripped pieces of tape. I have this um, kind of brown, it's kind of brown masking tape and I got it at an artist shop. I know people will ask me where I got it. And um, it is it was an independent shop. So I'm afraid uh, there's no way of kind of getting that particular role online. But I am pretty sure that if you search for brown masking tape, something will come up. I mean, this is the Internet. This is the 21st century, for goodness sake. You're going to be able to find what you're looking for, I'm sure. Now, here starts my mistake. And I haven't made this mistake yet in any of my other layouts. But for some reason, this time I decided that I was going to try and work with glossy uh, images and instead of putting gel matte medium on and clear gesso on I was going to just work directly on the piece of paper and leave it glossy well I can tell you I will never ever be doing that again because I didn't like how it came out on the page it just showed me what a huge difference matte medium and clear gesso make when you're doing a layer like this maybe as you're looking now as I'm putting the chalk pastel on and the gesso on you think oh that's fine Helen there's nothing wrong with that um there's nothing wrong with it it's just I can see a huge difference to what I usually get out of a page that has been primed with matte medium and clear gesso so my chalk pastel was put in place and I did continue to work on the spread after that I went you know around uh, various things with like, uh, you know, added some writing to the tape in pencil, added some further embellishments on, you know, for cutting out this um, little pine cone. I added some stickers um, that I'd, again, been sat in a, a sticker book waiting to be used for quite some time. I sort of went through that book and looked particularly for autumnal images. So that owl is a good example. And I did spend quite a lot of time auditioning it <laughs> In lots of places. I really couldn't figure out where should this owl sit. And eventually I did decide that to put it on the top of the text. But it took me quite a while to figure that out. And uh, so I put some stickers on. You know, I put some writing over the tape. I did a few more things to it. But ultimately uh, I stopped the video. And I went over it again with matte medium and clear gesso. And I came back to it again with my chalk pastels and my gesso and also a white acrylic marker and did some more mark making once the page was primed. Now again if you're looking at this and thinking well, there's nothing wrong with that I don't want to bother putting on matte medium and putting on clear gesso like fine absolutely go for it I'm not suggesting that it's a necessity I'm stating a preference um, I prefer pages that have been primed with matte medium and with gesso I've worked out that I don't particularly like glossy images I like the fact that I can reuse them but then I want to go over them with matte medium because that's the look I like best and I've also learned that clear gesso does a lot more than I realized you know it, it's not something that I would skip again it's just the way I like to work so that's a big lesson that I've learned in this spread and I think Ultimately, I am really pleased with the finished result. The sort of last thing that I did with the page uh, once I was 
sort of happy with the layout was is that I did add a little tip in. Uh, so I put a piece of tape down and I cut down a piece of abstract art that I made. And um, there is a video in which I explain how I made that piece of abstract art. And that will be coming up in a couple of videos time because uh, it's all about how I fixed a piece of abstract art that went wrong. So this is the final close up of the spread after I'd put on the gel matte medium, after I put on the gesso and put the final marks to it uh, when I've done my tip in with the um, abstract art and, you know, added that into the mix. Something that you'll see me work on in a couple of videos time. And overall, I was really pleased with the finished results. If this video has been useful or entertaining, I would really appreciate you giving me a subscribe and a thumbs up. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments about what you think about this spread. Thank you so much for watching. I'll look forward to bringing you another video soon. Until then, happy crafting and I'll see you next time.